Big question here is, can BP survive? We want to turn now to our panel, David Ullman, Director of the Environmental Law and Policy Program at the University of Michigan Law School and the former Chief of the Justice Department's Environmental Crime Section. Jerry Taylor, Senior Fellow at Cato. Also, John Kildiff, CNBC contributor and an energy analyst. Guys, before we begin here, take a look at this spoof from Saturday Night Live just a couple weeks ago. Good evening. I'm Tony Haywood from British Petroleum. I'm Stephen Newman from Transocean. And I'm Tim Probert from Halliburton. We're back. Hey. <laughs> We've come together to assure you we have many other ideas. Ideas formulated by our top scientists using state-of-the-art technology. The first plan is called Dolphins with Mops. <laughs> Before we round up a bunch of dolphins and scotch tape mops to their fins. And uh, there are many more, like Aquaman, Blame the French, Duct Tape, and our personal favorite, the Backup Plan. That's where we blow this whole oil mess off and go see JLo's no romantic comedy, The Backup Plan. <laughs> <laughs> so is it time to try dolphins with mops? Hey, nothing else here seems to be working. John Kildiff, you're an energy guy. You've been around this stuff your whole career. Tell me, how bad is it really for BP? Do you think that there's a chance we're going to see this stuff start lapping up on the shores of Miami Beach in the coming months? Well, thank God we can, we can laugh a little bit because otherwise you have no choice but to cry over this, really, Trish, uh, because the, 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 it, the stakes here are immense. Um, I've been saying that to compare this to the Exxon Valdez and, and Prince William Sound, as precious and pristine as that was, this is our economic breadbasket. This is the Gulf Coast, which is heavily populated, a heavy economic zone for us from end to end. This, the stakes here just go well beyond anything. That this, this oil is going to continue for weeks, spread around potentially to the uh, Florida Peninsula, and, and just continue on and on. It's, is it's, the it's, company going to survive it? I doubt it. David Allman, you don't want to throw the book at BP. You want the death penalty for BP. Oh, I, I don't know that that's true. I mean, I think uh, BP should be prosecuted and will be prosecuted criminally for what's happened on the Gulf. But generally speaking, the goal of a criminal prosecution is not to put a company out of business. It's to make sure that they're punished and punished appropriately for whatever crimes have occurred and that future violations are deterred so that we send a message that this kind of disaster can never happen again. David, Eric Holder, AG now involved. What are you anticipating in the in the in terms of criminal prosecutions that may be coming forward? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that there's going to be a criminal prosecution here. In fact, uh, I suspect the criminal investigation has been underway since the first days after the spill. Um, we probably don't have to look further than the Exxon Valdez to get a good idea of what kind of prosecution we'll see. I think we'll see, at the very least, criminal charges under the Clean Water Act, under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and under the Refuse Act. But we're going to see a much bigger penalty here. The criminal penalty in the Exxon case was $125 million. In this case, we're going to see a criminal penalty uh, many times more than that, possibly reaching into the billions of dollars, which would be the largest criminal penalty we've ever seen for environmental crime. Are, are there also potential civil, uh, civil penalties they may pay? David. Uh, that's correct. Uh, I, I think uh, on the civil side, I mean, this is usually the government chooses whether it's going to bring a criminal case or a civil case. But with this kind of tragedy on the Gulf, we're going to see both. So I would expect we're going to see criminal penalties reaching into the billions of dollars and civil penalties also reaching into the billions of dollars. Okay, so Jerry, is the government potentially going too far here when it comes to all these criminal and civil penalties? Uh, and how do you believe BP is going to continue to justify its existence to the administration, to shareholders, and to all of us as taxpayers, given what has happened? But well, we don't know why exactly the spill occurred. We don't know whether it was BP directly or one of their subsidiaries that was primarily responsible for it. Until we know what happened, we can't say for certain whether criminal activity was behind the spill or not. This is a big unknown, but clearly if the government wants to throw criminal penalties at this company, it can probably concoct something. But on the other hand, keep in mind that the government has launched criminal investigations of executives of financial firms related to the 2008 crash in September, and they found very little there. Most of those prosecutions have come to nothing. We just don't know. We don't know enough about why the spill occurred. But do keep in mind, the highest cost estimate I've seen 
for what this spill may end up totaling uh, over time is from UBS, and their estimate was about $12 billion. Now, it could still be higher because we don't know how large the spill is, but let's assume that $12 billion. That's less than BP makes in a year. They can survive that kind of payment, and they will be forced to pay all of that, as they should be. I don't think anybody would argue yeah, to the but, contrary. But back to what John Kildiff was saying earlier, Jerry. I mean, in terms of the severe economic consequences of all of this, and, and what happens if you start seeing this oil lapping up on the shores of Miami Beach in a couple of months' time? How does BP continue to justify its existence to not only in the administration, but, but basically the American public who are going to get saddled with a lot of probably the, the potential consequences here? Well, the argument would be if BP disappears, who's going to make good on all of these costs? BP is legally responsible for compensating injured parties. Injured parties at least have someone to go to if BP's around. If BP's not around, it's going to be very hard to find that money out of the Treasury and, and from other parties. So BP needs to be alive to make compensatory payments, as they should be. John, something's bothered me since this whole thing began. A dozen years ago, when I was the energy reporter for the Wall Street Journal, when we first met, yep. I was on a deep water rig out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico watching the fish swim between the pilings there. And I asked them, how do you prevent something from going wrong down below the surface? And they said, the blowout preventer. I am, just cannot understand how the industry as a whole, which has invested so much money in the deep water out there in the Gulf of Mexico, did not as an industry have a contingency plan. And they're pointing fingers saying the government is responsible for forcing us out to the deep water. Th to me, that seems like it's bogus. And it's really not just a failure by BP, but an industry-wide petroleum failure. Well, what, what is bogus is that the government forced them out to the deep water. Uh, the, the deep water fields are, are, are massive. Uh, there's a <laughs> Economies of scale there that these companies need to move the needle on their earnings to justify the investment. Uh, but beyond that, you've, from the beginning, I've been saying this is going to be a story of corners cut. And if you read today's Wall Street Journal, the accounts of how the, they were right. basically ham and egging at to the last minute, the, the permits as to what they were going to do and how they were <clears> going to drill or not drill, uh, clear to me that they did not approach this with the abundance of caution that's needed in these deep, deep water uh, drilling efforts. So what does this suggest for the future then of deep water offshore drilling. It's going well, to be a lot more expensive. It's going to be a lot more expensive, and they're going to have to approach it with the duty of care that's required. This is the equivalent of a space shot, and they didn't have the redundancies in the blowout mm -hmm. preventer and other things that would have prevented this. This was eminently preventable. That's what's so galling about it. I think well, David was trying it. to get in there. <laughs> no, that was yeah, Jerry I, Taylor I was just started gonna, jumping in. Uh, no, uh, I was just going to add, uh, Trish, that you know, we don't have any business drilling uh, a mile beneath the surface of the ocean if we don't have a way to shut off the wells if this kind of problem happens. And we've, we've spent all this money over the last few decades developing the technology to drill uh, well below the surface of the ocean, which is, of course, uh, an, an amazing technological feat. But it boggles the mind that we haven't developed comparable technology to stop a leak like this when it occurs. It's like having a car that doesn't have brakes on it. Jerry, last word. Is this an industry-wide failure, not just a single company? Well, I, I, no, it's a BP failure. This, this equipment didn't work. There were backup systems. The backup systems failed. We don't, we're not entirely sure why yet. The company should be 100% liable, and that's where we should uh, plan our conversation. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But, uh, but, but I, why, I, Jerry, wasn't the, in all of the money invested in the deep water, why didn't industry come together to save and spare itself this expense? Because as John Gilbert just told us, it's more I don't know, who this, more I don't know than who this industry is. This is a company. BP ran the deep water horizon facility. This is not but they Exxon's get together problem. every not... year at the annual conference and they beg for tax breaks from Washington know BP and they is, lobby is and, they, and they get together but they you couldn't get that together BP to deal with the safety. You don't know that BP is representative of the oil industry on these investments or that their safety procedures are the same or that their backup systems are the same. Each company has a different culture. Each company has different well, practices. Let me, let me ask the culture yeah, in on that one. It was the culture of the industry and the mineral exactly. management service. It was a hand in glove uh, you know, a, a path that went down we don't even between know government the and occurred. the industry. It's a little bit too uh, early they're, to they're, say they're, it. But we know they didn't have an adequate response to the accident, Jerry. That's the key to me. And right here, I mean, first of all, you either stand together or you, or you basically get picked off separately. And that's really the issue right here, is that the entire industry now 
fail to, to, to plan for this disaster. If, and that's if the something industry that is colluded to plan, they'd probably be breaking federal law. This I is highly these doubt. Are, and and I, I have highly to say, doubt if, a if, safety BP, plan. if BP was a blood or a crip, they'd be going away to jail for life because this is their third strike. They had Do a manipulation case of propane. Do either of you know what ExxonMobil's policies and they, and they, and they are as far as backup systems? I'll guarantee you Okay, you know. okay we got to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Dave Coleman, Jerry Taylor, and John Kilbert. Thanks very much.